hello welcome or welcome back my name is Ari, and today is one of those days where i'm too lazy to move my camera so you're getting my mid-month wrap up from right here you're welcome all right so i'm recording this like a couple days early but so far this month i have read 10 books and dnf'd one book so the first book I read this month was Canticle by R.A. Salvatore, which is the first book in the uh, Claret Quintet series, which is where I'm currently at with Dritz. Uh, this is one of my favorite books in the series, if I remember correctly, because it's been a long time since I've read this series. But the first book and the last book were my two favorites, and then I kind of like forget what happens in the middle three books. But this one was a five star read. I uh, love everything about it, and there will be a dedicated, spoiler filled video to everything Claret Quintet at the end of this month once I finish the other books. Next, I picked up My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This book takes place in the early 1980s in Charleston, South Carolina. Actually, technically Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, which is a suburb of Charleston. This follows two best friends. They have been best friends since third grade or something like that, and now they are in high school. Um, a group of four girls, so these two best friends plus two of their other friends, are hanging out, dropping acid, and one of the girls jumps off of the dock on low tide, which if you're not from, like, I guess the east coast probably, like, jumping off the dock in low tide is probably one of the most horrifying things somebody can do. And she gets swept away into the marsh and disappears for about 12 hours, and when she shows back up, she's very different and she's behaving very strangely and so this kind of looks into like is this ptsd or is she possessed by a demon or maybe both and how strong the friendship between these two girls are i ended up giving this five stars um there's a lot of trigger warnings in here this is horror and there is a lot of racism this is like rich white people in the 1980s in the south so you're gonna get a lot of racism you're going to see a lot of like how do i put this nicely saying it nicely is like teenagers being stupid teenagers but a lot of the shit that they say is very horrible and problematic like it's not an excuse that they're teenagers but it's not something but it's something that stupid teenagers were prone to say in the 1980s, um, homophobia, racism, al along those lines. Um, there's also trigger warnings for like sexual assault and like some other pretty severe scary shit in here. Like this is a very intense horror book. Um, I love this. I gave this five stars. And I don't know, I need to read more of Grady Hendrix because the two books that I read from Grady Hendrix both take place in Mount Pleasant and I'm wondering if I like Grady Hendrix's books only because they take place in Mount Pleasant or if I like his writing because for those of you who don't know when I lived or when I went to college I lived in Mount Pleasant so I'm very familiar with the area that they're describing in this book and in the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires but I very very much like this if you like horror and you're fine with like some pretty intense trigger warnings I would highly recommend this book I thought it was fantastic it's also like nostalgic next up I read Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh uh, Tetch? Tesh? I don't remember. It's on the cover that I have right up here. This is a short story. Um, actually, I guess it's not a short story. It's a novella, um, but it's a very short novella. It's like a hundred pages or so. It's very fairy tale esque and very like Victorian England era esque, where a very rich young man uh, whose last name is Silver, whose first name I cannot remember, uh, buys this land with a wood on it uh, like a not like a piece of wood like a, a woods <laughs> a forest that's the word I'm looking for uh, anyway silver purchases this house in this land and then he meets like 
the scary, creepy old man who lives in the wood. Uh, and they form a very unlikely friendship. Also, Silver is quite the bit of a flirt, <laughs> and he is constantly hinting that he wants to get in somebody's pants. Anyway, neither man really turn out to be what they seem, but I don't want to say too much more than that because it's only 100 pages. Like, the more I say, the more I'm just giving away the plot. So it's good, especially if you like fairy tale esque type stories. Uh, I ended up giving this four stars, I think. I probably would have given it five stars if there was more to it. It just wasn't enough. I wanted a lot more. Rep, there is LGBTQIA rep. The two main guy characters are both uh, queer. I mean, one character is potentially bi, but both of them like men. Overall, highly recommend this. I liked it a lot. Next up, I read The Resistors by Jis Jin. That's really hard to say. Jish Jin. Hmm. Whew. Okay. Anyway, I did not like this at all. This is sci-fi, like 1984 Big Brother type of sci-fi, um, set in the future in America. And the, like, society is split into, like, white people who have jobs and people of color who don't have jobs. They're unemployable and they just consume. And the government does a bunch of really shitty stuff and doesn't treat POCs well. Huh. Shocking absolutely no one. The main character of this book, Gwen, is a baseball pitching prodigy. And this book is told from the perspective of her father. And it's just her father is the narrator and he is basically talking about Gwen's life and everything like that. And Gwen has no desire whatsoever to be white. Because in this society you could literally have surgery and if you're a person of color and you want to get a like, and if you have enough money and cross over, then you get surgery and you're white, which is awful. Like, just to be clear on that, awful. But she doesn't give a shit about that. She just wants to play baseball because she really enjoys baseball. But she's so good at baseball that she could potentially pitch the Olympics. So it kind of follows her. I didn't like this at all. I gave this two stars. Um, I was bored most of the time. It was really weird. I hated the writing style and the um, where it's like it's very clear that he is telling you and not showing you type of perspective with how uh, the author did like the narration and everything like that. And let me tell you that I could give two shits about baseball. Like I do not care about baseball at all. So reading a whole sci-fi book about a baseball prodigy was just not my thing. So I ended up giving this two stars. Didn't like it. If, but that doesn't mean, just because I didn't like it doesn't necessarily mean that somebody else won't like it, especially if you like baseball and then like Big Brother dystopian. Next up, I read Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This book, uh, I don't know. I already knew going into this that I did not like Silvia Moreno Garcia's writing. Like, not a huge fan. And that's not to say that I hated this book. I just don't like the writing of it. I don't like how she tells stories. And I couldn't explain to you what I don't like about it. I just know I don't like it. This follows a like teenage, early adult, like debutante girl. And I can't remember her name because I just... <laughs> It's past. It's gone. I forgot. Uh, she goes, or she, or her father gets a letter from her cousin who has just been recently married. Uh, and her cousin's like, there's something wrong. 
my husband's trying to kill me, please help me, I need you, and like all sorts of like crazy shit in the letter. And so her father sends her uh, to this like run down European mansion in the middle of nowhere in Mexico. And this family that this woman has like married into is very British and they are like snobby white people who look down on uh, people of indigenous descent. Um, so if you're not purely white, they're, you're lesser than. And these assholes live in the middle of Mexico. They refuse to learn Spanish and they think everybody around them should behave British. Because <laughs> and they're also poor. They're like a, a family who owned a bunch of silver mines. That That's not working out so well for them now. So it was like all this like white supremacy from this family when like the situation for the right white supremacy was like the stupidest situation humanly possible for like that supremacy <laughs> like they're definitely a minority and they're not wealthy so what why did they think they're special like why does any white supremacist think they're special but like extra so in this case. Anyway, uh, the family is like sketchy the and like rude and the mansions run down and all of this like mysterious horror shit and weird dreams are happening. Um, I didn't like the main character at all. I thought she was vapid and like she just wants to party and uh, drink a lot and do drugs and I'm too rich and special for all of this um, and I just I just didn't care. Uh, in the end like the story itself wasn't like the worst thing I've ever read so I ended up giving it a three star. It's just not my favorite. Trigger rep I don't know that there's really a whole lot of rep or at least noticeable rep in the book um, trigger warnings. There's a lot of body horror in this book. I would say that would be like the biggest trigger warning. It is a horror book so there are scary things but I think most of the horror comes from body horror. Next up I read The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk and this one like this is one of those books that I totally understand what the author was trying to do. I just didn't care enough to see that this was ex like I, I just was being beat over the head with shit that I didn't want to read about in order to like make a point if that makes sense. So what this is is basically a univ like a very misogynistic universe and both men and women can be born into magic powers but only men can actually use magic. Women when they're like young like children and like very young they can use their magic but as soon as a woman is married she is placed in a collar that prevents her from even sensing her magic or ever using her magic until she goes through menopause because if a woman gets pregnant and then like the spirits because it's like sorcery so like the spirits that allow the woman to use magic if she's not collared and has access to her own magic then the spirit can inhabit the baby and then when they're born they're just like they're not human they're just like an evil demon spirit thing um <laughs> sounds really really weird. So basically this book is like a feminist story. The main character doesn't want to get married and this is like Victorian England setting type again um, but the main character doesn't want to get married. She wants to be a sorceress and so she's trying to teach herself to like summon one of these demon things 
spirit demon things. I don't know what they're called. They have a name. I just don't remember it. Um, so she, like, can make her own money doing her sorcery and doesn't have to get married. And, like, the whole book is just just misogyny, just end-all, be-all misogyny, and you know it is working towards, like, hey, women are just as good as men, women don't have to get married, but having to read, like, 80% of the book is just, like, misogyny, 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 just to get to that, like, last little bit of girl power is really, really not my favorite thing in the world to do. So, like I said, I didn't I, I got where it was going, I just wasn't interested getting there. <laughs> I wasn't interested in reading all of that misogyny to get to the girl power part. <laughs> uh, and also the main character was very wishy-washy. It's like one paragraph she'd be like, I'm never going to get married, and then like the next paragraph she's talking about like how she's in love with this guy, and she wants to be married to him, and if she has to get married, well, at least I can marry him. But no, I don't want to get married, but I do really love him, I should marry him. And it was just like, bitch, make up your mind, I don't care. Um, but yeah, I... I don't remember if I gave this a two or three stars, but if I gave it a three star, it was a very low three star. And that was entirely based on, like, my level of enjoyment. There isn't, like, like, it isn't a misogynistic work. It's questioning misogyny. It just questions it a little bit too much for my enjoyment. Uh, rep. I don't recall any rep in this book, but there could be and I just don't remember it, and then trigger warning is obviously going to be misogyny. <laughs> like above and beyond misogyny. <laughs> Next up I read the second book in the Claret Queen Tet this month, which is In Sylvan Shadow by Ari Salvatore, of course, and this one, um, wasn't as good as the first book. I'm not really going to go into it because I have a whole separate video about it at the end of this month, but it just wasn't as good. Um, the main character was a lot, like, his personality had changed, and while he was, like, really cool and interesting in the first book, he was, like, a whiny, jealous bitch in the second book. So, mm, not as, not a big fan of the where the character development is going in this book. Like, I've read this, like, the whole Claire Quintet, like, multiple times before. Like, I know the character development is going to get better. This is just, like, the low end of character development for this series. I think I ended up giving this a three star because it's not like I hated it by any means. It's just not my favorite in the series. So it's got that, that sophomore slump thing going on. Next up, I read Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas, and <laughs> I entirely understand what people are talking about when they say that they hate this book. Like, I can totally see a hundred percent why people really, really don't like this book. I gave it four stars. I like this book a lot. <laughs> but I totally get why people don't like this book. Uh, first off, so the character you're following in this book is named Inez, and she is a troubled young teenage girl who was accepted into Catherine House. Now Catherine House is a university in the United States, but it's not like normal universities where if you get accepted into this university you agree to attend and never leave campus for three years. Like you have to give three years to the university. It's a gated house or gated like campus I guess and you can't leave. You have no contact with the outside world for that three years. You can't write or call your parents. There is no internet. You don't get to read the news. Um, no social media, nothing like that. Like, you give three years of your life to Catherine House. But Catherine House graduates are some of the most influential people in the world, in whatever field. Like, you've got presidents, senators, artists, movie stars, like, 
if you want to be the best in your field, you go to Catherine House. And it's a very small school, so getting in is very hard. So the main character of this book, Inez, basically her junior year of high school she applied to Catherine House, did fantastic on all the tests and everything, and then had a traumatic event happen after she got through like all of the tests and the boards and the interviews and stuff like that. And then like her life has just been trailing off into her senior year. She graduated but barely and she doesn't really care about school anymore but she has to escape. She needs to get away from her life and so when she gets like the acceptance letter from Catherine House she decides to go but she's not really putting forth a whole lot of effort into uh, her studies or anything like that. Now Inez is one of those girls um, or Inez is kind of like somebody on the sidelines in Catherine House. She is not like in like the special fields or anything like that. She's studying like art history um, when like if you're like really big into the Catherine House you're studying Oh, I don't remember what it's called. If you're like really big in Catherine House you want to study the new materials program. Um, Inez has no interest in this and she's on the sideline. So this one is kind of interesting because you're not going to get any answers about what new materials is or what like the weird shit that's going on in Catherine House is because Inez isn't part of that. So because the perspective character you're reading isn't like in the know. The reader isn't in the know. So you're gonna have so many questions that you're just never gonna get answered in this book and that's one of the multiple reasons that people don't like this. The other reason is there really isn't a plot in here. <laughs> like the plot is that she goes to school for three years and n not a whole lot happens. Like they're not working up to like any mystery like reveal at the end of it. It's more like I went to school for three years <laughs> and, and this is what I did. Th these are like the most important things that happened during those three years. Like you're not like working up to a peak and then getting a conclusion. It's just a I went to school for three years. So there, there's no real plot. You're not going towards something in this book. She's just going to college. <laughs> it's a weird college. But there's no plot. Also, the other thing that I don't think, well, another thing that I don't think people will like about this is Inez as a character. She is very <sighs> loose, I guess, chill with her sexuality. Um, she doesn't really care. She doesn't love. She's kind of like emotionless but she craves human touch. So she has sex with a lot of people, um, male and female, and even when she's not having like sex with somebody she will like randomly walk into other people's rooms and like crawl in bed with them just for that human touch. So a lot of people who aren't comfortable with open sexuality or promiscuity probably are not gonna like Inez as a character. Um, so that's that's something that like obviously doesn't bother me at all and may not bother you at all but I could see that bothering a lot of people who are very um who aren't comfortable at all with like multiple partners um or just open sexuality uh in not saying like there's anything wrong with her being bisexual I'm saying like having sex with a lot of people. She has sex with a lot of people. It's never really like detailed on page or anything like that but you know she is having sex with a lot of people and it's protected. She uses condoms but it's still a lot of people. Um, the final thing that I don't think people would like about this but obviously doesn't bother me at all is that this is the most open ending open-ended book I have ever read in my entire life. This is like <laughs> stop in the middle of a sentence <laughs> ending where you're just like that wait what? <laughs> like 
nothing happened. Like, how is that the end of the book? Um, I don't mind open-ending books. I don't mind open-ended books at all like that, but even this one was like super extreme for me, where I was just like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> that was abrupt. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, like I said, I really liked this. Um, the, it didn't quite get a five star because nothing did happen. I think if there would have been like more of a conclusion to it that I probably would have ended up giving this five stars. And while I didn't hate the open ending, uh, it wasn't my favorite ending of a book ever. So I really enjoyed this, but really if any of those things that I just talked about bug you, don't even try this book, you're gonna hate it. Um, rep, there is queer rep in here. Uh, trigger warnings for death, depression, um, drug use, suicidal ideations, and some body horror stuff, kind of. The body horror isn't strong, but it's there. And then the last three books I read, I'm going to kind of talk about in like one chunk because I'm doing a dedicated video on this Tuesday, so I don't really want to talk about them right now because uh, they're going to be featured in that video when I kind of go into detail about what they're about. So if you're interested in me talking about any of these three books, check out the video that comes out Tuesday. Uh, now would be a great time to subscribe if you haven't already. But I will tell you that one of these books was a DNF, one of these books was a very high three star, and one of these books was a very low star. Low three star. Ugh. So guess in the comments which I DNF'd, which I gave almost four stars, and which I gave almost two stars, and we'll see. Don't, don't look at my Goodreads and cheat. Don't, don't cheat. But that is everything in this video. Thank you so much for joining me for my mid-month wrap-up. As you can see right here, I have quite a few books left to read this month, so I will see you in the next video, and we can knock some of these out. Bye!